So today we want to talk about magnetism. We spent the last couple days on a lab where we mapped the magnetic field of the earth as it went through my classroom. And today we'd like to actually look at some formal things dealing with magnetism. So I want to start out and have you guys know magnetic fields. Michael Faraday is the one who first came up with the idea of magnetic fields. And the unit that we use for magnetic fields are called Tesla, okay, capital T. I want you to know some magnetic fields. So the Earth's magnetic field ranges between about 10 and 65 micro Tesla, so a really weak magnetic field. An MRI is gonna have a magnetic field that's among the largest magnetic fields ever created and they are around three Tesla. Maybe you'll have a four Tesla magnetic field, but not much higher than about four Tesla. So expect numbers to come out kind of small with magnetic fields. Okay, for Franklinville, our magnetic field is about 51 micro Tesla. Notice that the US Geologic Survey measures in nano Tesla, but you just move your decimal point to convert. So you'll see a lot of weird units for magnetic fields. So Vernier, when they use their magnetic field sensor, do it in millitesla. To convert to microtesla, you're just going to move the decimal point three places to get it to a number between one and a thousand. Same thing with the USGS. When they give you a magnetic field in nanotesla, it's way more than a thousand. So you want to move your decimal point three spots to turn it into micro Tesla. So just practice that skill, make sure you understand what I'm talking about. Make sure you can convert from one metric prefix to another. Okay, so in our graph that we did this week, we talked about how the peak of the graph represented north, the valley of the graph represented south, and we talked about how it did not perfectly line up that the peak was at 90 degrees it did not point directly toward the North Pole of the Earth. And that's because, as we said the other day, magnetic north, which is indicated by this blue um, mark on the Earth, is not in the same location as the geographic North Pole. And because of that, your compass will not point toward true north. Your compass points toward magnetic north, the Earth rotates around true north. If you're following the North Star, you're going toward true north, not magnetic north. Okay, so if you want to see how far off you are between true north and magnetic north, you can go to the U.S. Geologic Survey. You type in your latitude and longitude. I did that for Delcy High School. And you can see that we are about 12 degrees off of true north. This goes by the name the declination. A weird name, probably never heard of it before, but magnetic declination refers to how far you are angle-wise between true north and magnetic north. Magnetic declination. Again, in Franklinville, it's about 12 degrees. You can set your phone so its compass will measure true north, or you can have it um, do magnetic north. Remember, they're not the same location, and the offset will be different in different locations. Franklinville is around 12 degrees. This map shows the declination for a bunch of different locations on Earth. So you can see, again, Franklinville is a little more than 10. Anywhere along this green line has a magnetic declination of zero which means their compasses point directly toward the geographic North Pole, okay? You'll see some are quite extreme and some are um, almost perfectly right on. I also want you to know that if you look at the declination, this was Franklinville in 2008, 12 degrees, six minutes. This was Franklinville in 2019, and that was 11 degrees, 59 minutes. And this is Franklinville this year in 2021, 
11 degrees, 57 minutes. So what you should realize is that the magnetic pole of the earth changes over time. You see year to year a slight movement in terms of where the magnetic pole is located. If we play this out over time, you can see how the magnetic pole moves around randomly and unpredictably. And because of that, the magnetic declination will change from time to time. This is known as magnetic drift. And you can see here a map showing where it was historically in different years. This shows the declination lines and how they change over time. So you can see as the years tick away, you can see how these lines of declination move around. It's because the north and south magnetic poles are in constant motion. I also want you to realize that the magnetic field is not at the surface of the Earth. The magnetic pole is not at the surface, but some depth below the actual surface. Not only that, because of the fact that our Earth is curved, you are going to have a vertical component and a horizontal component to the um, Earth's magnetic field at each location. I also want you to know that the magnetic field has reversed itself over time. And what I mean by that is you can see here magnetic north and magnetic south sometimes they switch positions. So as we look back in time, we can see how the areas marked in black are the ones that have the current orientation of the poles. The ones marked out in white have a reversed magnetic pole. So the magnetic reversal of the Earth is something you should be aware of. I also want you to know where humans first worked with magnetism. So early magnetism, the Greeks discovered some magnetic rocks. And obviously they didn't know what magnetism was, but they found rocks that would attract little bits of some metals. Okay, and they thought this was kind of weird. Other groups like the Chinese used it practically, and they realized that they could create a compass with these magnetic rocks. But these magnetic rocks, when floated, would always point in a certain direction, and that direction would be toward magnetic north. They did not have enough um, accuracy to realize that magnetic north changed over time. Okay, but these objects, when we turn them, would always reorient themselves to point toward magnetic north, and they were able to use this for navigation. I want you to realize I mentioned the fact that the Greeks found these rocks attracted bits of metal. It's not all metals. It is specifically and predominantly iron, nickel, and cobalt. These are what are known as ferromagnetic materials. The three metals, three common metals that are attracted to are magnets. Okay, when you have a magnet, one pole is going to be labeled north and one pole is going to be labeled south. The pole labeled north is the pole that when freely floated would point toward Canada. We call that the north end and the end that points toward Antarctica we would call the south end. Surrounding that magnet you see a magnetic field which we can trace out with iron filings. And for the Earth, you can think of, although this is not true, you can think of the Earth as having a magnet inside. We will be learning in a few days exactly what is going on. But the weird part is, if the north end of our magnet is pointing toward Canada, that means that the Earth's magnetism is actually with the south up near Canada. Because opposites attract. The north end is attracted to the south end of the Earth. Okay, and the south end just happens to be located up in Canada. Okay, when we draw magnetic fields, you can see they're in three dimensions, and that gets kind of tricky. So what we do is we draw right and left, 
up and down. And then these are where it gets a little tricky. This dot represents an arrow coming toward you in that third dimension. And this would represent an arrow going away from you. That is pointing toward Miss Dare's room. All right, so when you draw in magnetic fields, if you need to draw them in three dimensions and you're not good artistically, use X's and dots to represent that third dimension. And in our next lesson, we're going to look at what actually causes magnetism.